Well, hello again, everyone. Uh, yesterday we looked at Matthew 2, and if you remember, we were looking at the Magi, the wise men. And I said that today we will look at King Herod, uh, because the Magi go and they see this star and they go to try and find this king that they're looking for. They end up going to the palace where King Herod is, who was the king in the area at the time. They went to Jerusalem and found him there, and they said, where is this king who's born? We have come to worship him. Now, what's interesting is Herod's reaction. Herod's reaction is very different from the Magi. The Magi went and worshipped him and offered gifts and gave themselves to him. Whereas what we have with Herod is a very, very different response. We read in verse 3 of chapter 2 again, that says, When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. You see, Herod doesn't see this Messiah, this king, as a good thing. He sees this Messiah as a threat to his own rule, to his own power, to his own authority, to his own ego to everything and he's troubled and we're told that even all Jerusalem with him are troubled because this is significant and maybe they don't want this kind of Messiah, maybe they don't want this kind of saviour and that foreshadows what would come in Jesus' life at the end of Jesus' life when all the political powers and even the religious powers that knew about this coming Messiah ganged up and gathered up against him to crucify him. And he says that Herod assembled all the chief priests and scribes of the people. He inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. And they told him. So they, they, they had an idea that this Messiah was coming. In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it is written by the prophet. And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. And so rather than read this passage and go, yes, this is the Messiah, this is the Savior, let's go worship him too. They conspire to destroy him. They fight against God, they fight against the Saviour and say, I don't want the way things are now to change. I want, Herod says, I want to be on the throne rather than put Jesus on the throne. And so he kind of deceives the, the Magi in verse 7. It says that he summoned the wise men secretly and ascertained from them what time the star had appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem saying, go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word that I too may come and worship him. Now, obviously, this is a lie. He says, bring me word, because he wants to kill him. He wants to do away with him. Any threat to his kingdom, any threat to his throne and his rule, he wants to, to, to do away with. And we see that later on in that chapter, Herod kills all the boys in, the, in that region under the age who are two or under, uh, because he's so paranoid about his own rule and his own reign and his own power. He fights against God in a horrible, horrible way, and he fights against his saviour. Now, we today, you, you're probably not a king watching this, and you certainly probably wouldn't have as much power as Herod does here. But there are many powerful people today who do still fight against Jesus and fight against his people and persecute his church across the world. But each of us, even ordinary folks like ourselves, there's a danger that we don't want the rule of Jesus in our lives. We don't want him to rule and reign over us, even though his way is the best way. We want to sit on the throne ourselves and we want to control our own lives. Even as Christians, people who claim to follow Jesus, we want to say, yeah, Jesus is my Lord, he's my saviour, he's my king. Uh, but I don't want to do those things if he asks me to do them. I want to have control over this. Or I want to run this aspect of my life. But to follow Jesus means to give him all of our lives and give all that over to him and say, as Mary said, I am your servant. Let it be to me as you would have me. We want to follow Jesus. And maybe this morning or this afternoon, evening, whenever you're watching this devotion, you've realized that God has put his finger on something in your life. And he's saying that you need to hand that over to him. You need to allow his rule and reign in your life. And maybe you're watching this and that's for the first time. That's for the first time you're a, a not a Christian yet and you need to submit and bow the knee to King Jesus. And he's a lovely, loving, uh, caring, compassionate king to follow. And when we follow him, we know that we will have eternal life with him forever. So today, don't make the mistake that Herod did by wanting to control and sit on the throne and, and attack those who attack, who when he felt under threat, when he felt insecure. No, instead, hand it all over to Jesus and say, you are the king. I want to follow you. I believe in you. I believe in what you've done for me. And I want to live my life for you and bow the knee and worship you instead of myself. Okay, so tomorrow we're going to think about the shepherds as well and their response to Jesus. See you then.